You're not gonna believe this because it's actually kind of mind blowing, but check this out. In subjects that did this two hour a day, 80 degree Celsius protocol, they measured growth hormone before the sauna and after the sauna and growth hormone levels went up 16 fold. That guy is Dr. Andrew Huberman and he's a neuroscientist at Stanford. Now, to be honest, I'm a little bit skeptical about the study that he's citing. I mean, 16 fold increases in human growth hormone seems like a lot. Fortunately, I think I can test this out. And that's exactly what I set out to do. Step one was to track down the original study Dr. Huberman was referencing. I found the study. Let's dive in. Once I found the study, I decided to give it a thorough read all the way through. The paper was originally published in 1986, and it's called Endocrine Effects of Repeated Sauna Bathing. 1986, that sounds like a long time ago, and it is, but apparently this study laid the foundation for tons of future studies. This study looked at 10 male and seven female university students between 19 and 22 years old. Essentially, they had these volunteers sit in a dry sauna for 30 minutes, four times a day. The sauna was above 80 degrees Celsius at chest level. In American, that's 176 degrees. They would do these sauna baths in two sessions. The first two 30 minute intervals would be between eight and 10 a.m. And the second two 30 minute intervals would be between eight and 10 p.m. The study lasted for a total of seven days. They measured growth hormone levels on the day before, first, third, and seventh days, immediately after the first sauna bath of the day. And just like Dr. Huberman said, they saw a 16 fold increase in growth hormone on the first day. What's fascinating though, is that the effects of sauna on growth hormone went down over the seven day period. As you can see on day three, growth hormone was still quite a bit higher than baseline, but it's not nearly as significant as that 16 fold increase. On day seven, growth hormone was again elevated above baseline, but only by about two to three fold. Okay, according to Dr. Huberman, this happens because of something called heat adaptation. The reason this happens is because heat is a shock or a stressor to the system. If you run up a hill very fast, for instance, and your lungs are burning and you're heaving and breathing hard, on the first day, that's a very painful thing. But if you do it every day or every other day, provide you allow yourself to recover, pretty soon you're running up that hill and you're not breathing as hard. In other words, to avoid heat adaptation, you really can't do this protocol more than once a week. So why would you want a massive increase in growth hormone like this? That's a really good question. From what I can tell, it would be beneficial to pair this with really intense exercise. Say that you're planning to run a marathon or climb a huge mountain. Doing a sauna protocol like this could help you recover faster. Once I had a basic understanding of the study, it was time to get my growth hormone measured. I'm on my way to get my baseline growth hormone measured right now. I don't particularly like getting my blood work done, but I'm excited to see the results. Okay, mission accomplished. In two to three days, I should know what my baseline growth hormone looks like. The morning after having my baseline blood work done, I headed to the gym and began the hour long sauna protocol. Okay, so. The sauna I'm using is at 190 degrees Fahrenheit, which is quite a bit hotter than the 176 that they used in the study. I'm sitting a bit lower than I normally would because of this. See, so you've got the bench behind me, and then this lower bench. It's pretty freaking hot. I've got about 14 minutes left. Then I'll take a 30 minute break, hydrate up, and then I hop back in. During my break between sets in the sauna, I rinsed off and drank a ton of water. Quick disclaimer, I'm not recommending that anybody try this protocol. This is kind of gross, but all that liquid on the floor of the sauna is my sweat. You could become hyperthermic, which is not something you wanna be. So I'm not recommending that you try this. I'm just showing you what I did. Okay, so this is round two. I've got about 20 minutes left. I'm already soaked in my own sweat. As soon as I'm done with this, I'm gonna rinse off and then drive and get my blood work done. I'm expecting it to go up some, but I just feel like the 16X is kind of crazy. So we'll see what happens. All right, I just finished my second round in 30 minutes. Now time to rinse off and then go get the blood work done. It's been 26 minutes since I got out of the sauna and I'm about to get my blood work done. I'm, I'm super curious to see if this works because if it doesn't, then I feel like I've kind of wasted some time here. So hopefully it works out, fingers crossed.
With my second blood test done, it was time to head home and wait for the results. What were your test results? Okay. I woke up about 15 minutes ago. I was looking at my emails and my first growth hormone report is in. Let's see if we can find it here. The serum growth hormone, which means the growth hormone circulating in my blood was 0.4 nanograms per milliliter. I think that's a little bit lower than the reference range in the study, but that's well within what's normal. All right, I'll see you when the sauna results get in. A few seconds later. Okay, I've got some good news. The results from the sauna test just came in. I'm about to pull them up and take a look at them. So my baseline measurement was 0.4 nanograms per milliliter. My post sauna measurement is 7.7 .7 nanograms per milliliter. 7.7 .7 divided by 0.4. That's 19.25. So I guess this works. That's a 19.25 fold increase in serum growth hormone. I'm actually kind of shocked. To be honest, I wasn't expecting it to work this well. So I guess the question is under normal circumstances, would I personally use a protocol like this? The answer is probably not. For me, spending an hour in the sauna was really uncomfortable and kind of inconvenient. You get really bored sitting there for 30 minutes and it's not like meditating where you can kind of just focus on your breath because breathing in air that hot after a while starts to actually hurt. I don't think I would really use this unless I was trying to recover from something crazy. If for some reason I decided to run a marathon or if I was trying to recover from some other sporting event, then maybe I would use this. But I think I prefer to do lower doses of sauna and ice bath together. It's a bit more enjoyable and I think I get more benefit from that overall. I'll be doing a video where I attempt to increase my metabolic rate using ice baths soon. So if you wanna see that, make sure to follow along. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.